Am I gonna see some results in a month? Like, am I gonna have washboard abs? Am I going to look like a Victoria's Secret model? The answer is no, okay, it's no. It's Rose and welcome back to Cheap Lazy Vegan and another video. So we are back with an update of my fitness journey where I train and eat like a vegan bodybuilder or I attempt to train and eat like a vegan bodybuilder. Attempt being the magic word here. That is the most important word in this entire thing. Now when I say bodybuilder, I don't mean I want to get like extremely muscular and big and compete in like a bikini bodybuilding contest or something like that like it's nothing like that it's basically i don't know like a term that i use for somebody that wants to build muscle and lose fat i don't know maybe that is not the right term but that's the term i'm going to use okay just somebody that's focusing on like building their body into whatever shape right it's been almost a month i believe i think in a few days it will be a month since i started this challenge. I was actually really reluctant to do an update video on this because I felt kind of like I didn't do it that well, but also I'm like, what more can I do? You know what I'm saying? So today is day one and I thought I would just kind of outline what I am doing, the plan, the plan of action and um, kind of where I'm standing because obviously we all come from different levels of fitness. You are at different stages of your life than I am. You should probably know like where I'm coming from versus like somebody else, okay? So we can't just compare ourselves to other people without knowing the full picture. I already have some pretty good habits. I feel like I'm like kind of like a B, maybe a B minus or like a B grade when it comes to like fitness and health. Like I'm not like, super up there, you know, but I have pretty good habits. Firstly, I already follow a vegan diet, as you guys know. I do think my diet is pretty clean, relatively speaking. Um, I eat a variety of different foods that are within a plant-based diet. I don't really restrict anything, but I also don't eat too much junk food. I don't usually keep a lot of junk food in the house, although in the last week or two, it's been a little bit bad. But generally speaking, I don't eat that much junk food. I do cook a lot from scratch, so those are the things that I'm pretty confident with. I'm not too much of a sweet so I don't eat too many sweets, too many sugary things. Third thing is that I do work out on a regular basis. So I work out, I would say at least four times a week, usually. What's another good habit I have? That's pretty much it. <laughs> Overall, it's, it's, it's okay, it's pretty good. But here are some of the things it's, it's not so good, okay? First, I drink alcohol, probably a lot more than I should. Drinking is like the worst when it comes to like fitness and losing weight and losing fat and health and all of that. So that's a really bad habit I have. As much as I don't eat too much junk food, I still add that in there into my diet. I don't uh, restrict too much of that. So that's one thing that I could, you know, definitely like lower my intake of, which is like vegan junk food. So here is what I'm going to do to uh, try and become like a vegan walking goddess, become a hot vegan walking stick. What, what am I saying? Firstly, I'm going to do intermittent fasting. I'm sure many of you guys have heard of this term before, but in case you don't know, intermittent fasting is basically a way of eating where you fast for a certain number of hours in a day and then you eat for a certain number of hours in a day. So I'm going to do a 16 hour fast and eight hour feeding window. I've done it before. It's only hard when like, you know, I go out on the weekends or something like that. Honestly, it's, it's, it's usually the drinking that gets in the way, which leads me to my next goal, which is to not drink as much. I'm gonna cut down on my drinking. That doesn't really mean anything. Um, let's say that I will drink once a week max. Uh, <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> and I will stay away from like wine and beer and I'm gonna stick to like a vodka, water, vodka soda, those kinds of lower calorie drinks that aren't sugary. <laughs> I probably should be completely cutting out alcohol, but I'm just being realistic here. Like, it's gonna start getting nice out over here in Canada. You know, patio season is going to be happening, okay? And I am a social person, I like to go out. Unfortunately, the way that most adults socialize in today's day and age is through 
drinking so it's hard it's hard it's very hard let me tell you that like quitting drinking is so much harder socially than becoming vegan i'll tell you that much okay thirdly i'm going to be tracking my calories and tracking my macros and i'm going to be upping my protein basically my goal for macros is 50 percent. i googled this okay i was like how do vegan bodybuilders eat <laughs> So what I'm gonna do is eat 50% of my calories from carbohydrates, about 30% from protein, and 20% from fat. Of course, it's never gonna be like perfectly there, but you know, I'm gonna that's that's the aim. And apparently, if I eat 1,800 calories, which is gonna be probably the minimum that I eat, I'll probably eat more than that. Uh, if I eat 1,800 calories, then 30% of that is 130 grams of protein, which sounds like kind of a lot, but. That's probably gonna be what I aim for in terms of protein, like number of grams of protein, 130 grams of protein. Instead of being like super loosey-goosey with my diet, I'll be a little bit more like aware, a little bit more cautious, a little bit more mindful. Um, but I'm also not going to be like depriving myself so much to the point where I feel like, you know, I'm on like a diet. I don't wanna feel like I'm on a diet. That's the thing, you know what I mean? So like on a diet as in like, you know what I mean? You know what I mean by being on a diet? Yes. <music> Am I gonna see some results in a month? Like, am I gonna have washboard abs? Am I going to look like a Victoria's Secret model? The answer is no. Okay, it's no. It's week three. I feel like I need to kick it up a notch. I don't feel different. <laughs> I don't think I look different. I measured myself yesterday and I'm exactly the same. But also it's only been two weeks and I haven't gone extreme. And I feel like if you go extreme, it's not a good idea. So maybe I need to do this for like two months, three months. God knows. Anyways, still fasting. Fasting is going well. It's not bad. I have slipped up a couple times, but that's okay. Anyways, I'm going to go to the gym now. I think overall I was doing relatively well and maybe that's why I didn't really see changes in a short period of time because it's not like I made drastic changes. It's not like I like went from no exercise at all to all of a sudden lifting weights. So I think if I was coming from a position of like no exercise at all or just doing cardio and I did strength training for like a month, I feel like I would see much bigger differences. But because my body is already used to a certain level of strength training, I think that it's gonna take much longer for me to see changes. Overall, my experience with intermittent fasting was relatively good. It was okay. It wasn't extremely hard. It wasn't as hard as I thought it was going to be. The only time it was hard is when I wanted to socialize, when I wanted to go out for dinner or meet some friends for drinks or something like that. And so those were the exceptions that I made when I went out and I did some social stuff because I can't just, does anyone have like a perfect diet where like they never cheat on intermittent fasting? I don't know, maybe you do. There are supposedly many benefits to intermittent fasting. A lot of people have different opinions on this just like everything else on the internet, but supposedly there are many benefits to this. First of all, it's supposed to help with like digestion. Your body, when it is constantly like eating food, and digesting food, if it's constantly digesting food, it doesn't have enough time or energy to like work on other things in your body. The idea is that when you fast for, let's say like 16 hours, your body has time to do other things, work on other things that your body needs to do in order to, I don't know, be optimally functioning maybe. Some people say it's good for weight loss. Now I actually do think it's good for like weight loss in the sense that you probably will just eat less because you have a shorter, sh short, shorter, you have a shorter, eating window so of course you'll probably end up eating less in the first like couple of weeks i actually found that it was kind of tough to get in all the calories in that short period of time so it is a friday first week friday it hasn't been so bad i think the only problem is like me trying to fit in all the calories in the shorter period of time so i find myself like it's 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 something i have to get used to because i'm not used to eating this way so I have to like, you know, eat breakfast and then just like a couple hours later, I'm like eating lunch or something like that. Because my goal wasn't to actually cut out calories too much. I wasn't even really trying to restrict calories or decrease the number of calories I was eating because of the fact that I wanted to grow muscle. And in order to grow muscle, you do have to eat, okay? You have to eat. So that was the one thing that I was like kind of difficult because I wasn't used to eating like that, but then after like two weeks, I got used to it. So it was fine after like two weeks. But yeah, the only time I found intermittent fasting difficult was sometimes in the morning I would get really hungry because I would eat. Um, I usually ate at like either 11 or 12 or sometimes one. So 
that morning time, if I woke up early especially, I was pretty hungry. But I think the biggest challenge was the social aspect. Uh, I'm not sure if I updated you on the weekend, but um, I didn't really follow intermittent fasting. I did drink some beers. Weekdays are not really that hard, but the weekends are definitely where it's hard for me. So I usually do a mixture of both weightlifting and cardio, but because I was trying to gain muscle in this month, I kind of focused more on weightlifting. I did do some cardio, some HIIT training, some like treadmill, stuff like that. But most of the days I was focusing on weightlifting. Oh, by the way, I wanted to do this in a budget friendly way. So I didn't want to like hire a personal trainer, for example, because that's not budget friendly and that's not what my channel is about, guys. Of course, I could have done that. And like, I don't think there's anything wrong with hiring a personal trainer. I actually think that that's probably really helpful, but I know that people cannot freaking all go and get a personal trainer. Like they are expensive and they're definitely not for everyone. I did follow a guide. I did follow a workout guide. I usually like to follow a guide because I don't know. I just like need ideas and I don't have time in my brain to come up with what exercises I'm going to do. I don't have time to research. So I actually find it really just much easier if I just follow some sort of a workout guide. You can find also a lot of free guides online. All you have to do is just like search up women's like weightlifting guide or something like that. You'll probably find tons of workout routines and things like that. So you really don't even have to pay if you really want to do this completely on a budget. So the one that I followed is actually uh, one by a fellow YouTuber, fellow YouTuber slash Instagram person. Her name is Grace Fit UK. I'm sure you guys have heard of her. She's a vegan kind of fitness person. She has this guide that I just decided to follow. Yeah, this is not sponsored and I paid for the guide and it has like an app and stuff. So it's easy for me to like follow it when I'm at the gym. So that is the guide that I follow. It is very, very heavy on weight training. So five days a week, I've been doing that. I try to do at least five days a week. So I have been pretty consistent with the working out. I'm not following it like to the T, but I try to follow it as much as I can. Yesterday I did a kickboxing class and literally my body is so sore like my whole body is very sore So I guess it worked like every time I like cough or something like I don't know my upper body is like oh <laughs> So yeah kickboxing great workout this week. I'm doing a few more like workout classes and um, Last week I was focusing more on like doing my strength training routine So I've been doing that and I'm trying to also, another thing that I've been trying to do is slowly increase the the amount, the what do you call it, the weight that I'm lifting uh, more so than I would before. I do think that I could have definitely pushed myself a little bit more before and um, I'm trying my best to like push myself each, each time, try to increase my weight just a little bit. And I do find myself getting stronger. I definitely notice it in the gym. I have been incrementally increasing the weights, which is very exciting. Because I've been doing this vegan bodybuilding thing, you do need a little bit higher protein than the average person. So I've been doing one or two protein shakes, protein smoothies a day, once in the morning and usually once in the afternoon. Usually I only do one, but lately I've been doing about two a day. And of course, I'm just like a little bit more aware of my protein intake. Initially, I wanted to eat 130 grams of protein a day. So my goal kind of changed over time. I was like, oh my God, it's like, it's too stressful to constantly worry about like, oh my God, I have to get like 130 grams because I think maybe that's a bit accessible. So I never thought I would say this, but it's actually kind of hard to eat enough calories in the eight hour window because I'm eating like healthy food. I'm trying to eat high protein foods. Yeah, I mean, today I did pretty well. I ate almost 1800 calories and I ate almost 120 grams of protein. Maybe I'm being a little bit too ambitious with 130 grams of protein. Plus, I don't think I actually need that much protein. So I think I'm gonna stick to like over 100 grams of protein and that'll just be like my goal. But also, I don't know. I don't know how much protein bodybuilders actually eat. I did decrease it to like, I don't know, and anything above 100, I was like, okay, like let's just try to meet 100 and then I'm good. So that's what I've been doing, um, a slightly higher protein. So I have been trying to drink a little bit less alcohol. Also, when I drink alcohol, I try to drink like vodka soda instead of like my usual be like wine or beer, although I did have beer, so. So I try to keep it like maybe once a week, okay? So I feel like I did decrease my drinking a little bit at least. I think that's honestly like the hardest thing for me. I feel like I always say this. I feel like if I did not drink alcohol, I would have a six pack, okay? I would be a bodybuilder. <laughs> Maybe not. Making a conscious attempt to drink more water. So I have been really, really trying to focus on drinking more water than I normally would and just trying to remember to drink more water. It does help during my fasting time because if I wake up really early and I'm not eating until like 
many hours later, the one thing that really gets me through is drinking lots of water. So yeah, all right. Anyway, so that is what I've been doing. Um, and let me just tell you guys that I have not seen really any results. <laughs> you know what's really freaking sad is I bought this scale that is supposed to be like a fat measurement scale. Like it's supposed to give you your body composition and give you information about your body fat and all of these things. And I realized like, I don't think it's very accurate because the first time I stepped on it, it was like, hi, you are like 20% body fat. And I thought I was like, I was like, what? That sounds way too good to be true. Okay, it turns out I think it is way too good to be true. So I got this new scale that's supposed to measure my body fat. Apparently I'm 20.6% body fat. Guys, I have some not so good news. <laughs> I don't know. I was very skeptical about this scale and the numbers it was giving me. I, I felt like it was just too good to be true. So I went into I went into Google and I kind of did a bit of a search. It turns out that there is actually a thing here called athletic mode. So it was on athletic mode before. I felt like the numbers were too good. Like I felt like my body fat was too low and I think I have more body fat than this app was telling me. So I turned off athletic mode and it's completely giving me all these different numbers. I feel like I need to actually get my body fat actually measured because the numbers this is telling me is just completely different. For example, before I was like 20% body fat and now I'm apparently in 30% body fat, which I feel like I believe this number more. <laughs> but basically I'm gonna cry now because I thought I was all athletic and shit, but apparently not. So I don't really get this whole athletic mode I don't know, do you guys have any insight? I'll show you what I had before, just now. I just measured myself. So these were the numbers when I had the athletic mode on and this is just from today. So as you can see, it's completely different. Apparently I'm like almost at obesity with my 30.5% body fat. So what am I supposed to believe? What am I supposed to believe? Because if I was at 20% body fat, I'm supposed to be like athletic. <laughs> what? What is the scale? Ugh, so annoying. Twenty percent was like athlete, and then thirty percent is literally like I'm almost overweight. So which one is it? Am I an athlete or am I overweight? Which one is it? What a waste of money. Which one is it? Is it twenty percent? Is it thirty percent? These are completely different numbers. I don't know. <sighs> I'm not gonna like go through the numbers and stuff because there's no point because I have no idea if those numbers are accurate. But anyway, so one thing that I did do is I measured my inches in the beginning and I also measured today. The only changes that happened were that my belly button went down by half an inch. <laughs> I don't know if that's correct or maybe I just measured myself wrong the first time um, because like my love handles are the same. <laughs> Apparently my butt went down half an inch. That's great the one place I want to get bigger. Anyway, so that was my month long challenge and that is kind of why I said I didn't really want to, I wasn't sure if I wanted to make this update video because nothing has really happened. But at the same time, I did want to make it because this is kind of like a good way to like, I guess, make a point, which is that you cannot expect massive changes or any changes even in a month time, okay? By making little changes into your lifestyle and over a long period of time, you'll probably notice a difference, but in a short period of time, which a month is still a short period of time, unless you do something extremely drastic, which is probably not sustainable, it might not be healthy, it might not be healthy both for your mind and your body, unless you do something extremely drastic, it's not really going to make a big difference. So I guess that's also what I should remind myself because when I started this, I was like, oh my God, I do kind of think I will see some changes in a month. And it turns out that it's not that simple. <laughs> and it's not like I made drastic changes, like I said. So because I made these tiny little changes, I'm not gonna really see results in a month, right? Yeah, and it's not like I want to sacrifice, you know, going out once or twice a week. You know, it's not like I want to be so strict that I'm stressing myself over this because stress is also a bad thing for you know, your health and fitness. The moral of the story is do not expect instant results. I feel like we live in this world where we want results yesterday. And unfortunately, 
<laughs> the world does not work that way. Unfortunately, our bodies do not work that way and we cannot expect results right away uh, based on a little bit of effort. Basically, in conclusion, what I'm going to do is continue this this thing that I'm doing because what I'm doing is very sustainable, I believe. The intermittent fasting is working out pretty well. I'm not really sure if I'm seeing benefits at all, but um, I'm gonna keep going and see how much I can do. I will be flexible with it, just like I have been. I will try my best to follow intermittent fasting. I will also try my best to keep going at it at the gym and focus on lots of weight training, maybe add in a little bit more cardio, try to, you know, increase my weights, you know, a little bit at a time and focus on, you know, not drinking so much drinking more water, all of that stuff. And I will probably give you another update maybe in a month or two months maybe. Uh, we'll see, maybe we'll do like a three month results video. Like if I don't see any results in three months then maybe I need to you know, be a little bit more strict, <laughs> who knows. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'm sorry it was really long, I rambled a lot, but a lot to get through. Oh, by the way, if you like, <laughs> I don't know what these bodybuilders do, okay? Like what do these people do? Like all these vegan bodybuilders, okay? Naturally Stephanie, you know, John Venus, Brian Turner, these people, okay? They'd be up in here with those muscles. What are they doing differently? <laughs> Is it because they've been training like that for like years and years and years and that's how they've developed those muscles? Are they just genetically gifted? What are they doing differently? Because they, they eat some junk food too. You know what I'm saying? Like they eat some junk food, okay? I don't know if they drink alcohol, I think they do. Am I right? Am I wrong? I don't know. Give me some advice. <laughs> what do they do differently? I actually, I was like trying to think like, what do vegan bodybuilders do? Like, how do they actually live their lives? Anyone know? What's their secret? I think there is no secret. They probably, they obviously lift much heavier than I do. They probably are much more consistent with the gym than I am. They probably drink less alcohol than I do. They probably push themselves harder at the gym than I do. They probably eat more than I do. I don't know. A lot of things so <laughs> anyways uh, yeah I'm gonna keep going let's see what happens uh, sustainability woohoo long-term results woohoo I hope you guys enjoyed this video if you did please give it a big thumbs up and of course if you are new to this channel don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next video bye